Now this line, it makes me suspicious. It makes me very suspicious. Uh, it's, it's true, by the way, it's correct. It's not suspicious because it's wrong. I'm suspicious because the numbers look very, very similar to the numbers that I started with. Do you see the similarities, right? The first thing, the most obvious thing is there's just a number which is literally transcribed right there, okay? Don't answer this, just think about it. Is that a coincidence? There's another number. There's another number that looks very, very suspicious, right? This 25 looks like that, right? Well, it's five squared, isn't it? That makes me really sus, okay? Now, mathematicians, we always say, well, when there's a pattern, when we see there's a pattern, I want you to take away all the arbitrary assumptions I've made. Like, I assumed, okay, x equals five. How about that? I made that the point where I started. Would things with the pattern carry through if I didn't say it was particular, is it only because it's five? Is five like a special number? Is nine a special number? Is that why that's the case, okay? Now, remember when I talked to you before and we drew a big colored chart which um, drew the distinction between physics and mathematics and how we both look at motion, okay? If you're a physicist and you notice a pattern like this, okay, you say, huh, that's weird. Better do another experiment and do it with different parameters and all that kind of thing, right? And we see if we observe the same pattern, okay? Mathematicians take a different line, okay? Rather than doing it again, but with different numbers, mathematicians have this superpower. I can do this for every number, all at once. I can just say, consider, now we begin with negative 9x, right? If you're a physicist, you can only make your machine do a certain, one thing at a certain time. Unless well, quantum physics, but I'm not gonna get into that, okay? I can make this every single number all at once. I'm just gonna let it equal an arbitrary number. I'm gonna go back to the differential equation where this came from, right? So now I'm considering it for any value of n, uh, not just n equals three, which gives me n squared equals nine, I'm considering any n you like, right? For n being positive, it doesn't really matter. In the same way, I wanna consider any different value of, like I called this the amplitude, right? I called it a, so let's call it x equals a, some arbitrary amplitude, whatever you like, right? So I'm gonna say, that's my differential equation, and the velocity is zero at this arbitrary value, okay? What's going to happen? Let's just quickly march through. We've done most of the legwork. Let's see if the pattern holds, okay? I'm gonna answer the same question, and I'm gonna start the same way. So I'm gonna go, okay, the derivative of half b squared equals, this is just this guy, negative n squared x. So what did we do at this point over here? We integrate with respect to x. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna get my half v squared. That leaves me with minus n squared x squared on two, right? Because that n squared is just that constant hanging out the front, plus half of this guy, the constant of integration. And then I multiplied everything through by two, right? Because I just wanted v squared. Huh, so you see here, two things have happened, right? You ended up with a, a division by two here, because you had two. See this x? The power goes up, you divide through by the power. But that two is always going to vanish. It's not just a coincidence that you get left with n squared. X squared. It has to, right? So I say that again? You can copy the x squared. N squared, x squared. Uh, whoops. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's not just a coincidence that, that n squared there, that this nine ended up here, and therefore ended up here. That's where it comes from, right? It has to end up there, no matter what n is. It's not a coincidence. In the same way, I'm gonna evaluate what this constant is, and I'm gonna use my condition up here, right? When uh, x at x equals a, b equals zero, right? So when you see here, what am I gonna get here? Minus n squared a squared plus my constant equals zero squared, right? So you can see here, okay, look, it just drains over, right? Like so. Remember here I pointed out, oh, we just wrote down 225 because that's what nine times 25 is, right? But you don't need to have to factor that in. You're gonna get that n squared, that nine. It's always gonna come along for the right. That's why you're always gonna be able to do this factorization. So therefore, uh, what have I got here? V squared equals, I'm gonna put my constant back into my integrated statement. Right? So then I'm going to factor out that n squared like I did before and rearrange it so I've got positives at the front, negatives at the end. Okay. 
So, what do we observe here? This is our um, final differential equation. We've learnt a lot of them now. Our final differential equation for simple harmonic motion. Okay? When you see, you see these two already? When you see this one, which is where we started, just like before, just like before, you read, okay, this is simple harmonic motion, number one, and it's about the origin, yes? How do I, how will it look different if it's not about the origin? Plus. You're going to have minus n squared. But it'd be x, take away whatever you want, x naught, b, whatever you want to call that, okay? And that's going to be your new center of motion, okay? So we already know what these are. If what you see is a v squared, right? And just be careful, I'm pointing out the similarities between these so that you know they're subtly different and you can tell them apart. Have a look at this. You've got a lot of similarities there. You've still got this factorized thing in there, right? But what you're looking at is v squared, not acceleration, okay? And you've got this difference here has nothing to do with what are we looking at here? Has nothing to do with the center of motion, right? This has to be about the origin. You see that? That's where we started. It has to be about the origin. So really, this is a particular subface of this. Okay, you get a new one if you do it about the origin, right? But what this tells you is not about like where it, where is your center of motion. It tells you how far your, you you move from your center of motion, as well as how quickly you do that. Does that make sense? So if you get something like this, you can straight away read off period amplitude. You can't read off starting point, but that's okay. Often that's not that important. You don't care where you begin. You're going to do the same thing anything, anyway forever. Does that make sense? Okay, so if, you, um, if you've written down that, you should put a box around it. Um, like I said, even though you're like, wow, these are really different. They're really, really different, right? Um, for starters, acceleration versus v squared. Um, secondly, like you've got an x squared in there, not an x. So this is a quadratic, not a linear function. They look quite different. But by the time you kind of, like you're learning all these equations all together at once, students I find quite frequently confuse these two. They encounter a question, you're supposed to use this one, but they'll use that, or vice versa. Um, is there any benefit um, with, since both, both of them are square numbers, right, is the difference of squares, is there any benefit um, to factorize it even further to like get the amplitude as a, Number that you didn't need add square root. It means a minus x a plus x. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. You mean you mean like just getting the amplitude as itself. Yeah. Do you mean writing it like this? Yeah. Is there any benefit from doing um, that? In practice, I doubt it. In most cases, I mean, if you if you see something like this, you're like, oh, square number, right? If it were say 11 take away x squared. I would not bother to go further and say square root 11 minus x square root 11 plus x. I'd say, okay, I read off that. I suppose I would write, if, if I wanted to do that, if anything, and I don't think this is necessary, I would prefer to write it like that. Because yes. then it's like, oh, a, a squared, take away x squared, so the amplitude is square root of 11. Okay. And we have calculators as well. Exactly. Okay, so simple harmonic motion. Need bow around it. That's the last one, okay? That's the last one you'll have to deal with. But now the challenge for you will be, okay, I know so much about simple harmonic motion now. Remember when we had to say, oh, okay, where do we begin? That's the hardest question. I think that's the trickiest question to answer. Once you know where to begin, you just sort of just go for it. It kind of unfolds by itself because you have to integrate with respect to a certain variable. If you've chosen the right one, it just kind of falls out. 